In this video, I'm going to show you 17 extremely useful FL Studio tips, tricks, and hacks that I honestly wish I had known about when I first started producing. Let's get straight into it. Let's say you're starting a project on a random measure in the playlist. Probably not super common, but definitely something that I've had to do from time to time. If you still want the rest of your project to be set up and aligned with the grid, you just need to add a time signature marker. So let's say we want our grid to start here. Hold Shift, Alt, T, and we wanna go ahead and keep the 4-4 time signature, so just hit Accept. Now our grid has repositioned itself to start here and you can actually drag this marker around if you need to, to start somewhere else. Now I would go ahead and right click this, click rename, and I would probably just rename this start or something like that. And if you're worried about remembering the keyboard shortcut, you can go into the playlist options, go down to time markers, and then go to time signature change. And that's the same thing as hitting shift alt T. If you need to change some settings in FL Studio, you can right click and actually stay in the menu so that you can make multiple selections. So what usually happens is when you click on something, the menu closes, but if you right click on something, the menu will actually stay open and then you can make multiple selections for whatever you're trying to do. Now, this only works on certain menu items, but either way, definitely a good thing to know about, especially if you're trying to do something like change the scale highlighting in the piano roll, as this is typically a multi-step process. If you've ever accidentally or intentionally changed the size of the grid in the playlist, you can easily snap it back to the default settings by going up here to the upper right hand corner and clicking the scroll wheel on your mouse. Now, alternatively, if you don't have a mouse wheel for some reason, you can hold alt and just click on the square and it will do the same thing. If you're new to FL Studio, it can be pretty overwhelming to learn all the technical aspects of the program, especially considering there's so many different knobs, buttons, etc. However, FL Studio does tell you what everything is when you hover over it. That shows up here in the top left-hand corner of FL Studio. But one thing we can do to make things a little bit easier is to right-click on this bar and then click hint bar and that will make this other hint bar pop up and then we can drag this anywhere we want and it allows us to see what everything is a little bit easier and if you decide you want to get rid of it you can just right click up here again and then just click hint bar again if you want to turn audio into midi all you have to do is open up your channel settings right click on the waveform here and then go to edit and pitch corrector then you just need to click this button here with all the dots and that will turn the audio into MIDI directly in the piano roll. Now just make sure you have an instrument or synth selected and we can take a listen to the MIDI. If you were to create a bunch of drums in a drum loop or a bunch of instruments all stacked on top of each other in the same pattern, but you decide you want to split them into separate patterns, all you need to do is right click here, go down to where it says split by channel, and now all your drums are separated into different patterns. And then of course, the opposite of this would be merging a bunch of different patterns together into one pattern. In this case, you can highlight all the patterns on the playlist that you want to merge, and then just hit Control G, and it will add them all together into one pattern. If you ever need to get rid of background noise in a sample or an audio recording that you did, maybe there was a loud fan or something in the background, you can do this pretty easily inside FL Studio with Edison. Go ahead and open up the mixer. We can just pick a random slot here and add Edison. And now we can just go ahead and drag our sample directly into Edison. And as you can see in the waveform, we have a pretty loud fan. So let's take a listen. So what we wanna do is highlight a section of this where it's only the fan. And you can kind of hear there's a breath there. So I wanna get rid of that. So it's just the fan noise. And then I wanna go up here to this brush tool and go ahead and right click this. And you should see that little thing pop up where it says noise profile acquired. Now I can go ahead and highlight this whole section and go back up here to the brush tool and just left click it. So now the noise profile is already acquired and everything should be set in here. You can tweak these settings if you want to, but in my case, I'm just gonna hit accept and now it should eliminate that background noise. Now, this next tip is kind of a few tips rolled into one, but this has definitely saved me a lot of time over the past couple years, and it's definitely something that I wish I was doing a long time ago. Basically, you can create your own chains in the mixer and then save it into a mixer preset. So if there's a certain way you always process vocals or drums or whatever, you can easily just load it up and then tweak a couple settings to make it fit the current track you're working on. So as an example, I have this vocal chain here, which I use a lot to make vocals sound super spacey and ambient. And basically what I have is some compression, some EQ, cutting out some of the low end, 
an M auto pitch, which is messing with the formant shift a little bit, and then a couple of Valhalla supermassives, ton of reverb, a little bit of delay, and then I have the ability to filter out even more vocals and make it have sort of like a radio effect if I want by just turning that on. And then I have another delay that I can also turn on as well. Now, in order to go ahead and save this chain, I wanna go ahead and right click on the insert that it's on and then go to file, and then I can click save mixer state as. So I can click that and I can name this chain whatever I want. In this case, I've already saved it as my basic R&B vocal chain, but you can do this with any chain you want. Also, if you wanna copy and paste an entire chain over into another free mixer track, just right click on the insert you want to copy and then go to file and then click on save mixer track as. But when you click the mouse, hold it down and don't let go. So you can drag and drop this over whatever other insert you want to copy the chain over to. You can also do this with individual plugins as well by going here, going to save preset as, and then dragging it to whatever insert you want to copy it to. Shout out to Roman, who is one of my original lesson students who showed me this trick a while ago. It saved me a ton of time. Instead of loading all your metering plugins on the master channel, you can load them on the current channel instead. What this does is now you have the ability to view what's happening on any individual mixer slot as opposed to only what's happening on the master channel. And so if you want to view the master channel, now you just have to click on the master channel to view those meters. Personally, I prefer to just keep my metering plugins on the master channel. It's what I'm used to. It kind of goes with my workflow, but this could definitely be useful if you want more individualized information information about specific elements in your mix. Now, real quick, before we get into any more FL Studio tips, I do wanna mention that I offer one-on-one -on -one private lessons, which you can sign up for on my website at anothermonsterproductions.com. So if you're struggling with anything production related, or if you're brand new to music production, feel free to check that out. I'll leave a link in the description. So there's actually a way to fix corrupted files or an FLP file that won't load in FL Studio. So how you do that is you go up here to help, go to Diagnostics, go down here to Fix FL Studio Song Project. So if I click this, it'll give me an option to browse and then I can choose a random or whatever project I'm having an issue with. In this case, I'm not having an issue, so I'm just gonna choose a random project, click Open, and then it gives us the option to remove the plugin that crashed when the file was saved. In this case, if I were to run a diagnostic, it says project file was not fixed, corruption was not found. So there's obviously nothing wrong with it. However, if I go back in and click remove a plugin that crashes when the file is opened, then it gives me an entire list of all the different plugins that I have in this project. Now, unfortunately, if I select all, what's gonna happen is it's going to remove all of these plugins. So unfortunately with this method, you either need to know what plugin is causing the crash or you're gonna have to do a little bit of troubleshooting, which is pretty annoying. And so I do have another workaround so you don't have to go through all this. However, if you did wanna do this, you just select whichever plugin you wanted to. I'm gonna do um, Serum, we'll just assume it's Serum. And then I can go down here to start and it will run, take out that instance of Serum and it will resave it. So now if I browse here, you can see the lockdown grind recovered is a different file which I can load up and see if that fixed the issue. However, if I have issues with the file crashing or getting corrupted in some sort of way and I'm currently working on that project, an easier way to deal with this is to revert to an autosave file that's a little bit older before you had an issue that caused it to crash. So if you go to options, go to file settings, you'll see here it has an autosave feature and you can change this to never, you can change this to rarely, you can change this to occasionally, every 10 minutes, regularly, frequently, very frequently. So then you just need to locate where those files are saved on your computer and figure out which version will actually load up before it caused the project to crash. If you ever run into any issues of your projects lagging or messing up because of CPU overload, here's a couple of quick fixes. First, go to options, go to audio settings, and make sure that your buffer length is set to the highest possible number, which in my case is 2048. This will increase the latency when you're trying to record audio or MIDI, making it really annoying and difficult to record anything. However, it will also free up a lot of CPU. So if you really have to record something, you can switch back and forth 
forth between a shorter and higher buffer size. Now, while we're on this tab, make sure that under CPU, multi-threaded generator processing and multi-threaded mixer processing and smart disable are all turned on. They should be turned on by default, at least they were for me, but if for some reason they're not, turn those on as it can help with CPU. Now, if you wanna free up even more CPU, go to your project settings and under time settings, click time-based PPQ. The higher this number is, the more detailed your waveforms will look on the playlist. However, this also uses more CPU. So if we put this on a lower number like 24 or 48, we will free up even more CPU. If you're still having lagging issues after adjusting the buffer size and the time-based PPQ, you can freeze some of your MIDI tracks and bounce them down to audio. The fastest and easiest way to do this is to right-click on the MIDI you want to bounce to audio and go down to where it says quick render as audio clip. However, if you're doing this for the first time, you should probably make sure that all your export settings are where you want them. So let's click render as audio clip, which pulls up your export settings. And then I would make sure this is set to wave. I would do 24 bit. I usually put the resampling all the way up to 512 point sync. Everything else should be good by default. And now you can click start and it will turn your MIDI to audio. Then you can go into your audio clips tab and replace the MIDI in the playlist with the new audio clip. So now your settings should be saved. So every time you do this, you can just hit quick render as audio clip and it will take two seconds to do. If you're messing around on your MIDI keyboard and you played something that was amazing, but you kind of forgot what you just played, there is actually a way to still get the MIDI you just played, even if you didn't record it. So just go to tools and then go to where it says dump score log to selected pattern. And then you can choose how many minutes you want to go back. You could do this all the way up to 30 minutes ago, and then it just dumps the MIDI into your piano roll and you can mess with it there. If you wanna collab with other producers who are also using FL Studio, the best way to do this is to send them a zipped loop file. Navigate to file, go to export, and then down here it says zipped loop package. This will export everything into a zip file, including all your audio samples. So even if they don't have any of the same drum kits and other audio clips that you have, it will still allow them to open all that stuff up. Now, unfortunately, if they don't have some of the same third-party plugins that you might have, it won't load those up properly, but the project will still work with everything else that they do have flawlessly. This can also be a good way to back up important projects that you're working on to ensure that you can actually load them up again several years from now. One cool feature I recently found out about is that you can actually move the browser anywhere you want. So if you click up here, you can drag it anywhere you want it. You can also go to the menu and then click this auto hide feature so it's not in the way while you're producing. Then you just need to hover your mouse back over this and it will pop back up again. If you wanna put the browser back on the left side, just drag it back over around here and it should snap back to where it belongs. I've seen a lot of producers complain about not having enough effect slots on the mixer. And if you do run out of open mixer slots, you have a couple of options. First, you could link the insert you're using to a new insert on the mixer. In order to do that, just highlight the insert you're using that you've run out of slots on. And now right click this little arrow down here on a new insert and then click root to this track only. And now you have 10 more empty slots to add more effects onto. Another thing you could do is just use patcher. You can just add patcher on an empty mixer slot and then you will literally have unlimited amounts of plugins that you can add in here. Just right click anywhere on Patcher to add a plugin and then just make sure that the signal is going into the plugin and then back out into FL Studio. Finally, coming in at number one is a big workflow hack that will save you a ton of time. And that is creating a custom template for yourself. This is something I started doing a while ago, but I wish I had started doing it way sooner because it saved me countless hours of session time over the past several years. And creating a custom template is actually an in-depth enough process that I made a dedicated video showing you exactly how to do it, including how to set things up within FL Studio so that your custom template loads up automatically every time you open FL Studio. So click the video on the screen now to learn how to set up your own custom template and ultimately save a lot of time in the process. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.